वन टू थ्री we're doing it tonight is called uh, uh, Christmas Evil. Because it's Christmas. Yeah, it's right. It's Christmas time and we thought we'd uh, you know spice it up a little bit by having like a kind of a Christmas episode. And we thought we'd do the greatest Christmas horror My slasher favorite film. Christmas yeah. movie. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, one of them. One of the best Christmas uh, Santa Claus slasher films. But anyways, so the film's called Christmas Evil and uh, here's the trailer. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. I told you he'd be happy we remembered him. I want you to remember to stay good boys and girls. But if you're bad boys and girls, your name goes in the bad boys and girls book. something for you. I have superlative taste. Uh, directed by Lewis Jackson, who hasn't—he never did 
pretty much anything else. He produced a film called The Ghouls a few a few years later or something. Actually, right? that was quite a few years. Quite, quite a 2003 or something. But anyway, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, he made a classic film. I mean, it, people still talk about it. It's, it's always being re-released, and people are constantly wanting yeah, to see it's it. 1979. This yeah. is the 30th anniversary. And I, I remember as a kid seeing this film and just, well, I should have been watching it probably, but I was blown away by it. I mean, this was better than any of the other Christmas, like Silent Night, Deadly Night, which in my opinion is not that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of well, any they, of them. Those, most of them, like Silent, yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night, they're a uh, killer. They're kind of the yeah, they're, they're Friday the 13th the Christmas. Yeah, it's like Jason this, Wearing this a This is like a, yeah. a character study of, of the kid, you know, it, uh, yeah, drama. It is a character. Okay, you know, that's it's, all it's, it's it is. Substance. You know. And there, it, it, it builds to this thing that happens. <coughs> and, yeah. And, and it's it's it's. It's not about the killing. It's about the killer. Yeah, and it's uh, kind of a spooky film because you're basically following a guy as his, his sanity is slowly deteriorating. Okay, so I'll tell you the film. Basically, it was a, a um, the, the star it stars um, uh, Brandon Maggart, who plays this guy named Harry Stradling, who is, uh, the, I might as well say this, that Brandon Maggart, is his big contribution to life, I guess, is his daughter is Fiona Apple. But anyways, so, she's a singer. But anyways, um, so what happens is that he's this guy who was, like, as a child, he flashes, yeah, it starts as a child, yeah. flashes back, it, and uh, I think it was he in the sees Mommy kissing, or Santa Claus kissing mommy under the. Yeah, computer. yeah. And he sees um, <laughs> he sees uh, his dad on the lips too. Well, he's but not the ones on her face. Yeah, they, he sees <laughs> him and his little brother spy on their mom, and Santa Claus gets real excited. But it was something. Yeah, it's his older brother, and he's saying how Santa Claus is his dad. Yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah, believe it. Didn't and, and then what happens is he see witnesses something he probably should have watched. Anyways, and that kind of messes them up for life. Yeah. And at, we cut to many, many years later, and he's he's in his 40s now, and he's working at a toy factory, and he's working all these shifts, and he, he sort of he counts himself as like the head elf. He doesn't say that, but that's what he is. He's working at a toy factory. Yeah, and yeah. And you find out kind of early on that this guy's not all there. I mean, he just or is something. He's, yeah, he's, he's a social reject. He's strange. and uh, Virgin. He's a virgin. Yeah, they make jokes about that. But anyways, like he, you find out he's actually keeping names. Uh, like, you know, he's like Santa, living the Santa life. He's Santa, living absolutely. He's, fans, he's like epitomizes Santa Claus. Yeah. The way, he you know. projects himself as Santa Claus, but he kind of keeps. Well, it, he, he knows he's not Santa. He's just he like, keeps it in check. But he, yeah, he's like uh, epitomizing Santa. And then there's that point where he crosses but he's into kind sanity. of he's kind of almost there because he's list. He's got yeah, lists of, list of all the children. Kids. And he's like and that's pretty creepy. Like, but it, but, he, when he, but the movie, it's from his perspective, kind yeah. of. So he, you think you're not really like after the movie, you'll sit there and think, "There's a four year old guy writing yeah. my kid's name down in a yeah, yeah. book because he saw him." You know, but that like, it's creepy. But in in the movie, you're thinking. Moss Garcia. Throws rocks at dogs, uses profane language, picks his nose, impure thoughts, negative body hygiene. Well, he's kind of being tormented by his co-workers who think he's just strange. And of course, they're justified in thinking that because he and, is. And the other thing that's pissing him off is that he's working at this toy factory, and they're making assembly line toys all the same, and they break. Yeah, and like, yeah. You know, and he's, you know, yeah, he, Santa he toys thinks he's are working. supposed to be special. <laughs> he thinks he's working at Santa's workshop, and he's but creating these. But it's not. Groups. They got these new corporate things yeah, coming, coming in down and telling you know, this is how it's and done. So are there enough toys for all the children in the hospital? I don't have the slightest idea how many children are in that hospital, Harry. I worked on campaign presentation, but I'll tell you something. The idea of mine is really solid. The factory can't always shoulder the whole burden. You mean you're waiting for these guys to contribute? You're on the other side of the desk now. you got to understand good business. It's okay, Harry. Really, the factory comes out okay, and so do those kids you're so worried about. <laughs> you're worse than he is. He doesn't even know why a tune has to be played. You actually know how to play it. And look what you're doing with it. 
what happens is he ends up taking a guy, he guy messes with him, and he, he ends up working a shift, and he catches the guy after work. Well, he doesn't, the guy doesn't see him, but he, he sees this guy making you know, laughing about it, the fact that he conned this clown into working for him, and that seems to set him off. And that night, he goes home, he glues a beard on, and there's your, he's, there you go, he's he gone. Santa, he yeah, and passes over the he paints his van like a Santa, Santa sleigh, and essentially just goes around and kills all his tormentors on Christmas Eve. And it's, it sounds... Yeah, but he's not just killing, he's out, he steals oh, once yeah, twice right, from the thing, right. takes to the hospital, he's that's doing right. all this. I forgot about that. He's, yeah. he's killing is, he, it happens, but it's... Yeah. But he's like, also like he yeah, gets pissed off. Crazy. He gets pissed off at the guys who are, who are screwing with the factory, and he and he nails them with a was it an ice pick or something yeah, right in yeah. front of the, you know, and then runs off. Seriously, Santa Claus, will you tell our viewers if you just arrived? How was the trip down? Oh, and I see you've given up your reindeer for more modern wheels. <laughs> the soup and the soup too. Oh, excellent, it's ravishing. Who does that tailor? Come now, sir. I think you had enough. I have something for you. I have superlative taste. Me See, that's the thing, like, I mean, I sound like Silent Deadly Night, if you're going to compare it to that, or Psycho Santa or Satan Claus, it's not, it's like, not a guy running around killing people for no reason. This guy actually has a pretty, yeah, just kind of, like, like, most of the people he kills, like, I mean, maybe they didn't deserve to die, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, you can kind of, had it you're coming. going with him, and you kind of get his vibe. An anti-hero kind of thing, no, right? I don't, that. he's, he's, I, I was rooting him on the whole time. He's I a strange cat, awesome. like when he's all, when he delivers the toys to the, the kid's home there, yeah. you're going, what the hell's going on here? But then about five minutes later, he's killing a bunch of guys in front of a church, or he, he's stabbing somebody in front of a church, right? Yeah, but they, they, they had it coming. Of course they had it coming in that world, in that university, they had it coming. In his but, world, they had it coming. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're, but he took it to extreme. And the thing is, it actually, it goes from there, and then something happens at the end of the film, and it, that's probably, I'm thinking the last shot of the film is possibly the reason why it's such a classic. A magical, film. yeah, I and it just got it destroyed, though, this very night. Well, no, no, don't, I wouldn't, I don't even want to ruin it for anybody. <coughs> I don't want yeah, I don't want to say that. It, I just leave it alone. But the ending is pretty wild. It was a magical ending to me. It and, was, and it's, it was like, and it comes out of nowhere. It's so surreal. You're going, what the fuck just wow. happened? What the fuck just happened? Like, did the guy just take off? Like, fly well, away? Yeah, we don't want to say the ending, but... Oh, come uh, on. Let's do it. It's Christmas. The guy... Let's let's say it. Well, I'm just saying, like... It's, you don't want to ruin it, eh? No. Well, I don't okay. know. Everybody's 30 years. I guess you've, you've either seen this movie or you Or you have, and or you're a complete idiot, yeah. Like it comes down to the old, and you know what kills me though? What? The they're chasing them with torches. Yeah, I know. How I know. often does that happen like, in the twentieth century? I know. Okay. It's kind of hilarious. So when it all comes down at the end, and you know they're chasing yeah. them, well, it's almost like a Frankenstein character. Yeah, it's it like, goes right into that. It's just like, but but yeah, he's 
he thinks, hey, maybe you could even draw a correlation to Frankenstein if you want to think really He's, deeply about it. But yeah, but, but it's like the reverse of Frankenstein. Because like Frankenstein, everybody perceives him as a monster, but really inside he's like, you know, yeah. like he he inadvertently actually Frankenstein killed people who deserved it, and you know, but yeah. he was nice to the kids. Yeah, but he was perceived as a monster, but inside he was, you know, not really. Yeah. Whereas this guy, people perceive Santa Claus as like this benevolent oh, that's right. thing. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, inside he's like, you know, he's There's something killing. Yeah. Dark there, yeah. I, uh, oh, I really must go now. But now, I want you to remember to stay good boys and girls. Respect your mothers and fathers and do what they tell you. Obey your teachers and learn a whole lot. Now, if you do this, I'll make sure you get good presents from me every year. <laughs> but if you're bad boys and girls, your name goes in the bad boys and girls book. And I'll bring you something horrible. <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you why this is my favorite. Was the magical ending? Yeah, I but, love that. Yeah, it, that blows me. The that. but the. It, it, you can well, say, you, I don't I'm just saying, like, if you haven't seen the ending, and you watch it, and it's magical for you, don't look <laughs> yeah, at the internet movie database. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a spoiler. It says spoiler, and it'll uh, spoil it for you. Yeah, and it did. It spoiled it for me. Yeah, there's there. If I really, liked I it. liked because because it was a happy. There's no possible way this could have a happy ending, and then. Because it's yeah, Christmas, it, it, it has a happy ending. Yeah, I know. And it Yay. Takes, but I don't know if that would work for because you were saying. For me, I was rooting for this guy the whole movie. I'm like, really? Yeah, this guy. I, I thought he was too deranged to root for. Like, and so I, I just, when I watched See, him, I, thinking, there was a creepy thing about him, and I just couldn't I couldn't get behind him like I would a, a character that I like. Even I've even gotten behind. I get behind Jason for Christ's sake. The oh, last Jason. Yeah, Jason could drop over dead, and I, you know. See, but I get behind him, like, and and the thing about it is, like, maybe because he's not, he's just a cardboard character. But this guy is so well developed. Lewis Jackson takes his time developing this guy, that everything about him just creeps me out, and and that's the whole thing. Even when he's doing good things, you kind of get creeped out. I'm creeped out by it. So, I don't know. I I like I like the well, film. Well, see, I viewed it as you know he's he's living the Christmas. You know, you do the good things, you get the presents, you do the bad things, you get scratched off the list, you know. And I think what ha the killings seem to come when there's like some kind of a, something intrudes into that kind of fantasy world that he lives in. Yeah. Like, you know, he's making the toys, but all of a sudden these uh, new honchos come in and are yeah. changing the toy factory Yeah, his, anything that interrupts their fantasy. They're dead, they're dead, you know, yeah. and then... Who else has he killed? The guy that screwed him over for the shift there. Yeah. You know, yeah. he lied. He, you know, it's but that's gotta it. die. It's know? not it's not a justification for killing him. <coughs> no, but, but in I his mean, fantasy, in his fantasy, that's even I think he would have even killed that kid, Moss Garcia. Had, <coughs> had it not Definitely. Had it not well, he, got stopped, you know. Yeah, yeah. In the or he, I don't know. See, I don't know if he would have Well see that's him. it. It's like that there's that good little girl that he's writing in yeah. his book and then there's Moss Garcia looking at the, the bad kid, right? And, you know, and he's like, yeah. Hey, and it's it's. I mean, if if you're gonna dig out a Christmas movie, I mean, like that, you can't go wrong with this one. I mean, this it's got a, it's got a Christmas like, every. This this one I watched with Black Christmas, the old Black Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah, double yeah. feature every Black year. Black Christmas is a yeah, every right, year it's a right Christmas there with Black tradition. Christmas as one of the greatest Christmas horror films ever made. And you can't touch Black Christmas and stay away from that piece of crap that came out a few years ago. I and, still haven't seen it. Yeah, it's just garbage. Just it's like so much of the stuff that gets remade anymore, they just turn it into garbage. But I don't know. And you take a classic film, and how can you make it into garbage? But they seem to do it every time. You throw some CGI yeah, in and make it all pretty. It's just I don't know. There's I don't know. But so, anyways, that's uh, I don't know what else to say about this. There's a uh, 
there's a lot of Christmas movies and there's like a lot of Santa, serial killer Santa Claus movies out there, but nothing can, can touch this one, and I highly recommend it. Definitely, so, definitely a good. There's a, oh, I gotta mention, uh, there's a movie called Night Thirst, where it has a serial killer Santa Claus, and I, I have to admit, I think that's probably uh, played by John McBride. I think that's probably one of my other favorite serial killer Santa Clauses. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it. No, I don't think He's so. He's hiding in the woodshed the whole time, and the little girl sees him. Oh, and it's really, familiar. really spooky. But it, it's a it's an anthology film. But anyways, right. I don't I don't want to get yeah. off topic here. So anyways, we'll stay. Uh, sorry, you better watch. Oh, oh the, where do you get it? Oh, I want to mention that uh, one of the only people. Oh, by the way, there's oh, okay. one person in this film that actually went on to something else. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Patricia from, uh, Richardson, who plays Moss Garcia's mom, for like two minutes in the movie, she actually became, uh, went on to quite a bit of uh, fame, playing uh, Tim uh, Toolman Taylor's wife on the show Tool Time. And she actually went on from this film. Brandon Mager, the star yeah, of the film. She was making this film, and he was getting busted for Canyon at the same time. Exactly, right. Yeah. Right, on no the money. She, yeah, they were both. And then they got together. And yeah, they, and Brandon Mager had actually went on to become quite a uh, well-known character. I wouldn't mean well-known. But he became a, he got a lot of work as a character actor. He's in a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies and stuff. He's still making Yeah, it. yeah, when I... I thought, geez, I've seen that guy before yeah. when I saw this movie. And he's got that face that kind of... You, know, you don't. Yeah. You, and it's one of those people, you, you know, you've seen him, but you don't know where. And he plays, a, he plays a great cycle. Yeah, he just, definitely did a God, good job and that guy's like coming right out of his skin the whole movie. And I I just like, it's a great performance. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was creeped out by it. And that's a testament to his ability as an actor. So, anyways, where can you get it? Uh, you... Yeah, throw a rock somewhere. Oh, I'm like, sure that I, I have a 25th anniversary edition yeah. I've seen, and I, I mean, I have a VHS version somewhere. But yeah. The, but uh, I mean, box sets. Up, yeah. uh, Up the yin yang. Know, yeah, it's on uh, all these Brentwood lots box sets. Lots and lots There's of box sets. Nightmare from the Crypts, 20 movies, and one of those Christmas Eve. Book. I don't even know. Can you, can you still get the Brent Tales of Terror? Yeah, these are all on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, this one. This is their best one, Tales of Terror. Of, of these yeah, bunch that come out, I, I really like this one. But, uh... Christmas uh, Evil, Deep Red. You can't go wrong with it. You can't go wrong with the box set. You can't, you know? I mean, for... You know, to buy the DVD for, like, 19... Yeah. 15 bucks or whatever it is, you might as well buy a box set yeah. for, I mean, five bucks more, right? Yeah. Get, you know... Plus, you get, like, so many hours so of So many extra hours of movies, you know? I, what can I say? Christmas. Give them to you. Yeah, yeah. that's right. They make good stocking stuffers, I, I guess. Yeah. So, and so they're not pendulum for once. They're uh, yeah, we actually same company. Though. Yeah. So anyways, that's the, uh, that's the, I don't really know that's what else Christmas, to say, but so, that's the uh, Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas episode. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. So Merry Xmas. Merry Christmas from, uh, uh, from Films. Unknown Cult and Cool. Okay, that's it. That's all. <laughs> sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.